G'day there. You're watching the Aussie Boom Guru, and today I'll be covering a quick uh, example of how you can build a corner window family using Revit, which is quite a common request that's come up for me. Um, so today I'll be talking about how to build it as a family, not as a curtain wall. Um, I have seen some tutorials recently by Vulcan Architect, who does make some great tutorials about simple ways to approach problems in Revit um, that are usually really suitable for designers or students. Uh, but one weakness of using curtain walls is obviously that it takes a while to edit uh, the curtain walls to suit the junctioning and also it's not a window family. It doesn't schedule, doesn't report, doesn't tag like a window. So it's perfectly suitable for some scenarios, but I thought I'd show an alternative approach uh, using a window family. We'll also look at some basic examples of adding some controls for corner junctions and I will discuss at the end just how you can handle non 90 degree junctions because the window I build will be locked into a 90 degree junction. So I will be using Autodesk Revit uh, 2022 today. Uh, the way that I use Revit will be quite similar um, for how you'd build a corner window in any version um, and no third party tools. I will assume you've got a little bit of knowledge in the Revit family editor, so I won't necessarily explain everything in depth as I go. The focus here is more how to build this specific family. So let's jump in. Um, if you find I talk a little bit too fast, feel free to use the playback speed on YouTube to slow me down a little bit. Or if you find I talk a bit too slow, you can speed me up as well. Uh, but let's jump in. So the first thing we need to do is begin the window in this case. I'm gonna begin a new family. And in this case, I'm just gonna be building it based on the standard metric window template. Um, you might think it's a bit strange because it doesn't actually reflect a corner window. Um, so by default, we're gonna have uh, three reference planes. Um, I can technically delete two of them, and typically I would begin by doing this. Um, this is going to become, instead of the center of our window, this will become the corner of our corner window set out point. So in this case, I'm just going to rename this to left. And this is a reference that does effectively just have to stay in the family um, because it is part of the template. So in this case, uh, what I'm going to do is set the frame for my window, so the extent of it. Um, I'm just going to create another reference plane. And we're going to make the corner window go from here to here around this corner. Um, so what I'm also going to need to do in this case is modify the openings extent. And in this case, I'm just going to realign it using the align tool. And you might be wondering how we actually going to get this to go around the corner. Well, we're actually going to model it inside one host wall and then cut it out of another host wall. And we're going to do this using a void. So I'm also going to need to create another reference plan at the far end. And we can just name these to probably strong references that I can say um, uh, front corner. I can call this one rear corner. And we'll also set up just some basic reference planes to support things like a frame. Um, in this case, I'm not going to build a complete window. I'm just going to build it uh, to a certain level of detail. Usually I'd go all out and put trims and architraves and seals and everything in the window. Um, but this is more about just showing how to set up the fundamental framework. So this would in this case become a parameter. This would be my frame width. And in this case, we can also set up a setup for our frame itself. But the first thing I'm also going to do is add a reference plane for the back of my host wall. So this is actually going to be where the host wall sits in the model. So we are going to need to add a parameter to this. And usually I make this an instance based parameter. Um, so I'm just going to call this uh, second wall thickness because we don't technically know the thickness of the other wall that this corner window is going to wrap around onto. Um, so in this case, I usually give the user the control uh, to dictate that just in case the wall, the corner window goes around as a different thickness. Uh, to the front window, which can happen sometimes on houses when you might have a brick wall with the front that turns around into a lighter wall on the side. It's not super common, but it can happen. Um, at this point, I'm going to just set out a basic frame. Um, there's a few ways you can set out a window frame. You can set it out from the front and then dictate the frame's depth, or you can work from the center of the wall. Um, typically, most people would work from either the front or the back of the window. Today, just to keep things simple, I'm just gonna work centered. Um, even though it's less common. So the host wall sort of just always dictates the position of that window. So I'm gonna make this an EQ EQ, and this will be my frame depth, which we can modify after. But generally I would um, recommend setting out from the front of the window instead. Um, at this point, I'm also going to create another reference plane in the middle. 
Um, it's up to you whether you want to rename this as a reference. You could make this a strong reference and say sensor side two. And again, we're just going to be creating those same dimensions on the other side. EQ, EQ, and the same frame depth. So this will enable us to create uh, this corner uh, relationship. From here, really, I'm just uh, setting up basically the, the forms to create this corner. So I'm going to do two extrusions. Uh, one of them, I'm going to look uh, front on at the window, and I'm also just going to create two references for the top and the bottom of the frame. So usually we'd probably just use a sweep for this, but because it goes around a corner, um, it's a little bit more difficult. So this is my preferred method. So I'm just going to draw the lines that we need, and then I'm just going to constrain them after. It's just faster. Um, so this part's pretty, pretty boring, but effectively I'm just locking these. So I'm locking that to the front side of the frame as it goes around the corner. And then likewise, I'll do the same on the other corner. So you might want to skip ahead just a little bit. Uh, this isn't the most exciting part. Often for extrusions, I do like to host them to the front plane of the frame. Um, and then that way we can just lock it on one side. It's one less constraint for the family to deal with. Um, likewise, on the left, I'm going to be doing the exact same thing. And you can draw and snap as you go. I just often prefer to do all my aligning in one step afterwards. Now, at this point, I usually model this over the point I need it to be, and then I use the join tool, um, just in case I want to modify this frame afterwards. And we'll have a look at doing a closed corner as well, probably, um, as an option. So at this point, uh, I'll just go and constrain this to the other plan, align it backwards, and in 3D, we should now have what is our corner frame. It still looks a little bit strange because we just have the one host wall, um, but we'll have a look at how we deal with that afterwards. But for now, we have just our basic uh, window frame. Um, so we'll work with this for now. Of course, we also do need our glass as well. So um, that's gonna be a pretty similar exercise. Um, this, this part of building a family is obviously pretty, pretty easy. Um, let's in this case, just say we want a 12 mil sheet of glass. And I'm just gonna come to the middle and mirror. It's a little bit of a shortcut when you're just working with a reference plane on a corner. You can use the mirror tool at 45 degrees. And we'll just make our glass. Make sure you get the reference plane, um, not the center of the host wall. And a little trick here is if you ever need your host wall in formulas, um, what you can do is dimension until you get the references in the family. Now I believe, yeah, so you can see it forces you to use a reporting parameter straight away. And I can say host thickness. And this actually becomes a parameter you can use in formulas that will respond to the depth of your host wall. So if you did want your um, host wall to be the same on both corners, you could just change this to the host thickness parameter. Um, I believe at the moment, why is that not available? Um, I might not have created a proper reporting parameter here, potentially. I'll just double check. I might have to use a formula to pass that parameter across, but I could in this case say um, host thickness and second wall thickness. Uh, now I have to actually make this to the face of the wall, the face of the host wall. And I believe that, that that might even, no, it doesn't open up the ability, but I think I should be able to pass this. Yes, there we go. So you can see now we can actually just drive both of them to respond to the base host wall thickness if we do that. Um, by default, I might actually do that just to keep it simple, but it's up to you whether you want that second wall to be completely controlled by you. Um, so for now, we'll say that this is always going to be the same. And I can see I've also forgotten to EQ, EQ. So it's a good thing I did that. Now sometimes that happens with um, EQs. They can go a little bit strange. So what I usually like to do is take all the reference planes I'm trying to move and do them manually instead, and then lock. Because the EQ EQs can do some pretty strange things sometimes otherwise. So this is gonna be my glazing thickness. Um, we'll make it type based. And um, you can do this one using a single extrusion in plan, this should be fine. 
instead of doing two in elevation. And this time I am using the pick pick line tool. It's a little bit easier in this case. And that's pretty much the foundation for our window. Um, obviously we're not adding a lot of accessories to it. It's very a very basic window. Again, I'm just going to place this at the class line level and then just use the align tool. So at that point we do have basically the geometric components. Um, I'm just going to classify these with subcategories and add materials to the window. And I'll just give this a glass before I assign a parameter to it so that it is glass in the family. And we'll tell this, this is a glass subcategory as well. Um, so we have the basic foundation of a window at this point, but at the moment it's not going to be capable of cutting uh, the secondary host wall. So for that, I'm going to both enable shared, just sort of the shared family, but also I'm going to turn on this cut with voids when loaded. Um, and as well as this, I'm also going to add a void in this case. So I'm going to create a void extrusion. And for now, I'm just going to create it over here. I'm also going to want to uncut this uh, from anything it's trying to cut. So by default, hopefully it won't try to cut anything. Good. But I don't think it currently intersects anything, which is probably why. Yeah, it's just sitting all the way down the bottom. So if I bring it up, um, I think it should still not cut anything because I didn't model over anything to begin with. Yep, excellent. Again, I can just try to uncut and we can see it hasn't responded to anything, which is great. So in plan, I'm going to currently just line this up to the extents of both sides of the window. So you can see it's really important that we did dictate the full extent of where that wall would be if it did exist. And now I'm just going to, again, host to sill, and then we're going to align it to the top. And this control will actually be available in the project to cut the secondary wall. So this is really the key to making a corner window actually work. So I'm just going to quickly save this family. And I'm just going to create a new project. I'll just use a no template. And I'm just going to place down two walls uh, to model this corner window around. I might also just tweak a few of these parameters to be a little bit more true and correct. Let's say our frame depth is 112. Uh, frame width is uh, 50, glazing is, uh, we'll just go 10. Um, and pretty much everything else is fine. Uh, I'll say in this case, we have missed one parameter, which is what is the width in the other direction. So I'm gonna just create an extra dimension here. And I'm just gonna call this uh, width two. At this point, you can also decide whether you wanna make your width and your height instance-based. So in this case, let's say we want width two to be instance-based. We'll add width 1, which currently isn't there. And we can also just tick this box to make it instance based. Now, this is a special process. You can't do this through the uh, type properties. If you go to the width property here, it's going to be grayed out. But if you do create a, a label with the parameter assign, you can actually access that box there instead. Likewise, with the height, it'll be the same thing. We have to access it through here. So at this point, uh, we've just got an open corner window. Um, which we can modify the size of. So what I'm gonna do is firstly just place it and we'll notice that by default, the opening will behave. It will cut the window on that first corner. But if I do put it onto the other corner, noting in this case, currently it doesn't cut it. So what we need to do now is use the cut tool and we need to cut this window. So we actually cut this window from the wall. So we select the wall. And I think in this case, I've made a mistake. I might need to remove the opening from the family, I believe. I think the opening may clash with the void frame bureau. I'll try this instead. No, I think I've done something wrong there. But I can cut, there we go. I can do both that way, that's one option. Um, it seemed like the opening was giving me grief. I might just refer to a finished one in my own collection, but I'm pretty sure in this case there is no opening. I'll just double check. Yeah, there's no opening. So what I've done instead actually is I've cut the the void in the family. So in the actual family itself, I've cut this from the wall, I believe. 
And then instead, I'll just place a new one in plan. So that's the first void, and that's already automatically going to happen. And then, oh, okay, it's already cutting from the corner anyway. It knows because these are joined, I guess it must have to cut the second one. So that's um, effectively doing the work for us now. We can see that void is basically taking effect. Um, sometimes you may have to do the cut on the window. At the moment, I believe if I uncut, no, it's not even requiring an uncut. Um, but if I did separate these walls, they may stop. No, oh, that's working, cool. Um, so yeah, you, I guess you can just cut the void at the project level and that also works too. But if you have to, you may need to do cut and then cut the window, potentially. But at the moment, it seems like that's all it needed to do. So we can see this has effectively created a corner window, um, which effectively is also a window in Revit with schedulable properties. Um, if you wanted to add a corner frame, that's possible as well. Um, so in the family, we could look at creating two scenarios. Um, so by default, let's just say the corner frame is to the corner. We'll keep it simple. Um, so in this case, I'm just going to add the frame. And as you can guess, we're going to control this typically just using visibility parameters and a few extra elements. So I'm just going to go and constrain this in uh, elevation. Now, if you want the frame to be seamlessly connected on the corner, um, that would require uh, either some voids to be available or not available on the corner to basically remove this element from the joined outcome. Um, because you can't turn on and off joined pieces, it will turn off the entire thing if you join this frame. So if I joined this to this, like it looks great, like nothing's overlapping, but I can't use visibility parameters to turn that piece off. But I could put a void here and push it either in or out or up or down to sometimes cut this piece and sometimes not cut this piece. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna work with the seam line and I'm gonna associate a visibility parameter to this piece and I'll just call this a uh, corner frame. And I'm just gonna make this a visibility parameter. Again, I'll override the styles and the frame material. And we're gonna to wanna to turn off our corner glass in some scenarios. So um, in this case, uh, there's actually a few ways we could do this, but for now, I'm just going to keep it simple and I'm just going to say uh, no corner frame as an instance parameter under other. And I'm going to go to the formula and I'm going to say that no corner frame is equal to not corner frame. So these will effectively reverse control each other. Great. Um, I'm also just going to copy in place and I'm just going to basically constrain a new set of glass that actually terminates on the corner. Now you are gonna to have to reconstrain everything. It's annoying that there isn't like a recopy with constraints option with geometry. So we're also gonna to have to go into elevation and also reconstrain this object as well. Now one thing will be consistent in that it is still, it's still gonna be hosted to the same reference plane in elevation. So we're only gonna to have to reconstrain this instead. And we're gonna to wanna to take this new set of glass and instead we're gonna to wanna to associate this to corner frame. So if I now load this into the project instead, by default corner frame will be active and we can see that our glass does stop there because we see our secondary set of glass. But I can, I can also disable corner frame as well. Now, one last scenario you may be wondering is, well, what if like my window is like that? Well, of course the window is only built for 90 degrees. Now you have a few choices here. Um, in my opinion, the best solution here is to only build corner frames to the common angles that you would come across. So if you come across 45 degrees quite often, build a corner window that is set by default to 45 degrees. Um, it's not usually worth building families using reference lines and angles um, because eventually you will probably wanna constrain things like nested panels in here and they usually can't rotate easily with constraints on angles. Um, so typically I'm going to recommend at that point that you probably build preset corner windows, um, not just a 90 degree window. That is one advantage the curtain wall system does provide over a window, but of course the curtain wall is not schedulable, it's not categorized as a window, and it typically won't be following the same rules and systems you might have built for your window, such as how you manage architraves and sills. Um, so I hope this has been uh, useful, um, and we now have this corner window. So there we have it, um, a basic corner window system. I hope you find it useful and maybe it will expand your own personal library setup. 
Um, so you can find most of my material over on my GitHub, including this window in the Revit repo, um, as well as all the other scripts and things I develop. So thanks for watching today. Um, you can drop a comment below if you have any requests or feedback, um, or if you have uh, future topic requests as well. Uh, feel free to leave them in the comments or email me here as well. I hope you enjoyed today's, today's tutorial and it might have taught you something new, or maybe it reaffirms that you've used the right approach for your own corner windows already. Uh, so feel free to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, up to you. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Thanks. Take care. Bye.